The next thing we need to talk about is how SNOMED codes and expressions fit within the electronic health record structure. Where do the codes and expressions go? Well, electronic health records can be thought of as collections of statements. And codes and expressions ex expressed in, in concepts that are uh, from SNOMED are the values that go into the fields or slots of the information model. And they can fill in some or all of the body of a statement. The information model determines which fields and which slots are available, and so there needs to be coordination between these two. Here's a diagram that helps to illustrate the difference between the patient record structure and the patient data itself. So we might have a, a record structure that has slots for um, who is the patient, with a link to their diagnosis, where you would put a disease as the diagnosis, then there may be a, a link to something that was done as a treatment, and treatments might have diseases that come as complications. So for a specific instance, we might have Mrs. Jones, who has a diagnosis of melanoma, has a treatment of surgical excision, and has a complication of infection. Those are the, those boxes and the linkages between them represent the information model. So this is a very simple information model, but it illustrates what's the information model or the record structure and what's the patient data that goes into it. All right, now how does the terminology fit with that? Well, this diagram shows us our terminology model. We have at the very top, we have our top concept, then we have a hierarchy with thousands of surgical procedures, one of which is excision, and we also have a hierarchy for diseases, and one of those is melanoma, and another is infection. So here's our record structure. Melanoma and infection can fill in the disease slots. Uh, surgical, the surgical procedure of excision can fill in the, the surgical procedure slot. Um, who the patient is is filled in by a separate element, an identifier for the patient. So that's something else that goes into the, the record there. So why do we need an information model? Well, obviously, clinical statements require some kind of information model. The simplest information model, the sort of uh, absurd extreme, is you know, put your information here and everything goes in the terminology. Well, that's absurd because what do you do with names and identifiers and dates of visit and that sort of thing? You need something that identifies those as uh, different. If we're going to structure individual observations, the simplest way of doing it is just to have a field for the date and a, f and a field for the observation and you type in free text. You say whatever you want. But we really can't make effective use of free text for decision support. So maybe we want to replace that free text with a coded value. But this is an extreme uh, that's absurd because it requires everything to be in the coded terminology. Um, another approach that's very common is for people people to say, well, let's divide up the coded things into observation types or questions and values. But then there are difficulties figuring out what goes in the question and what goes in the answer. So let's say that I want to um, represent the fact or record the fact that we have malignant mesothelial cells found in a pleural fluid aspirate. Well, what's the, what's the field? What's the coded field and what's the value or the answer? One of the um, questions might be pleural fluid finding. So what did we find in the pleural fluid? And the answer is malignant mesothelial cells. But just as logically, you might say, what's the site of malignant mesothelial cells? And the answer be pleural fluid. Or the answer, the question might be lab test result, and the answer be malignant mesothelial cells in pleural fluid. Or the question might be type of mesothelial cells in pleural fluid and the answer malignant. Or the type of malignant cells in pleural fluid and the answer mesothelial. So we can divide up the question and answer in multiple different ways. So the world is not represented by question and answers. It's represented by single findings. And we need to deal with these uh, overlaps and gaps that result from a sort of question-answer approach to information models. 
So clinical statements are the basis for a common view of the patient record structure. A, a clinical record is really a record of what clinicians have heard, seen, thought, and done. It's not a collection of facts. There are other requirements for a medical record that naturally follow. It has to be attributable. We have to know who made the statements. And it has to be permanent, so that if I said it uh, at this time, even if I later on decide that that was not true, I can go back and from a, a medical standpoint, from a medical legal standpoint, I can determine when and how I made a change in opinion about what was going on. So here's a sort of diagram of what the overall structure of a patient record would be, and you have statements and you have linkages between those statements. Here's a simple uh, note for patient visit. So Mr. Harvey Q. Patient on the 5th of February 2008 made a visit to a community health center, was seen by Dr. Smith, complained of pain in the right calf. Uh, they found swelling and tenderness over the right gastrocnemius. There was a Doppler ultrasonography done, a diagnosis of right proximal deep venous thrombosis. There was a prescription for low molecular weight heparin um, that was recommended for administration uh, subcutaneously twice a day for two days, 70 milligrams, and then returned to clinic in two days to begin warfarin therapy and a test request for an INR antithrombin 3 and protein C sent to the pathology lab. So that's the story. What I've done is uh, numbered the different statements that are made, and within those statements I've identified the various pieces. Some of the pieces are these uh, boxes that are in green. Those are real-world uh, entities, instances. So Mr. Pa Harvey Q. Patient will have a patient identifier. The Community Health Center, that's a particular instance. Dr. Smith is an instance of a doctor. These are heparin syringes that are going to be delivered to the patient. The path lab is a particular laboratory. Then in purple, we've got some context. So complained of, done, diagnosis, recommend, uh, test request. That contextualizes the other elements of the record. And then in red, I've got the things that would be represented using SNOMED codes, like a visit, a patient visit to, the, to a uh, health center. Uh, pain in the right calf, that would be a SNOMED finding code. Swelling, tenderness, those are... Um, findings, right gastrocnemius, that's an anatomical code. Doppler ultrasonography would be a procedure. Right proximal deep venous thrombosis, there's a disease. Prescription is a uh, procedure. Uh, also is supply request. Low molecular weight heparin would be uh, a, a drug product, and so on. So you can see that within each statement, we can identify the things that would have SNOMED codes and their relationships to contextualizing elements and to uh, entities that have other, um, other codes, other, other identifiers. Okay, now let's talk about the primary and secondary uses of data and how we might go about using those. First, let's think about coding. Uh, the first rule of coding, if you're going to code clinical information, yesterday's data should be usable tomorrow. And there's a corollary to that. If no one is going to reuse the data, then no one needs to code it. We really want to make sure that the data that we're coding is coded in a quality way that we can understand what it means and reuse it over time. So let's think about why would clinicians record patient data? Well, first of all, we do it to aid our memory to legally document what we saw and did and sometimes why, to communicate to other members of the team, to support and justify reimbursement, and also to satisfy the requirements of protocols and systems. We might have research protocols, minimum data sets, professional guidelines, and there might also be some incidental constraints imposed by the software. But those are the primary reasons for recording patient data. Then there are some secondary uses. Secondary uses are any of, 